All right, here we go. Comparing and contrasting. Ready? Relax and just listen to me. Take some notes. Do you like my graffiti introduction? Yeah, it's not bad, yeah? Two colors, yeah? yeah? Two colors for the inspector. Well, actually, my inspector watches my YouTube channel, then he or she will, will see it too. Anyway, when do we use these uh, advanced structures for comparing and contrasting? Sometimes we can modify the meaning of a comparative adjective or adverb. For example, she's feeling better today. Sophia is feeling better today. Better than yesterday, yeah? This is a normal comparative. Better today. That's fine. It's a comparative. However, we can modify the meaning of this better over here. What words can you think of that may modify that better? Can you give me some examples? She's feeling better. You could say she's feeling a bit better. She's feeling a little, a little better. You could also say she's feeling... She's feeling a little better. You could also say she's feeling, Carlos, what did you say? She's feeling much better, much better. Very good. So here we're modifying the meaning of better with these, yeah? What else? What else can you think of? Uh, we, we said one before. So Paulo is slightly. slightly better. Very good. Before, you just said that... Uh, Alexandria, the second biggest city in Egypt, is significantly smaller. So she is significantly better. Significantly better. No, <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. I'm just giving them to you. But yeah, for example, these two are uh, making better, softer. These two are intensifiers. Yeah, Alvaro? These two are intensifiers, and these two are not intensifiers, but the opposite, yeah? Any other, for example, slightly, something similar to slightly could be somewhat. Have you ever heard this before? Yeah. Somewhat. Is she somewhat better? Somewhat better. That is like a little bit. Have a look at this one, marginably. Marginably better. Be careful, because you need adverbs here. Slightly, marginal. Bly, yeah? Marginably better. She's feeling considerably better. Yeah? Considerably better. She's feeling slightly better. She's feeling a synonym for much. She's feeling far better. Yeah? She's feeling far better today. Marginably. Marginably. M A R G I N A B L Y. Marginably. Marginably better. You could also say she's feeling she's feeling no better. Yeah? She's feeling no better. Or if you make a question, is she feeling is she feeling any better? Yeah? She's feeling no better. Is she feeling any better? No. She's feeling no better. Any or no. Any or no can also be used. So remember, you can modify the meaning of the comparative with adverbs like this. So far, so good? Okay. Have a look at this. You can also avoid repetition after then. In your writings, whenever you do a writing exam, I don't want you to be repetitive. And this sentence here is repetitive. Peter's English is better than John's English. Peter's English John's English is very redundant. There is a lot of repetition there. So in order to avoid repetition, what can you say? Pete's English is better than... Very good. Another point for Danny. Pete's English is better than John's. Correct. Any other possibility? Let me give you a clue. Pete's English is better than... That of... That of John or that of John's? John's. That of John. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that of John. So be careful because here you need the Saxon genitive than John's. But here you don't need the Saxon genitive than that of John. No Saxon genitive. So far so good? 
So, to avoid repetition, you can say things like this. Yeah? To avoid repetition, you can say things like this. I mean, is this incorrect? No, this is fine. It's, I mean, fine. It's grammatically correct, but it's repetitive. Yeah? This is repetitive. So far, so good? Than that of. Yeah? Than that of. Than that of. Than that of. Than that of. So far, so good? Than that of John. Okay, have a look at this. Messi is the best player in the world. I mean, in terms of titles, in terms of titles, historically, in terms of titles, he's won the World Cup, he's won the America Cup, the Champions League, the League, I mean, everything. Tell me something he hasn't won. <laughs> anyway, Messi is the best player in the world. How can we emphasize, I can say, I don't, I don't care, I could say ha halal or halal, no, halal, halal, halal food, halal, I could say halal, halal or Cristiano, <laughs> I don't mind, I don't care about the name of the player, could be, I could be, I don't know, any other, halal food, halal, halal is the best food in the world, I could say, okay, Messi, Cristiano, I don't mind, is the best player in the world. This is a superlative. But how can we emphasize? Okay, let me write that in Cristiano here. Or Haaland, or whatever. Is the best player in the world. How can, how can I emphasize this, which is already a superlative? This is already emphatic, but I want to be even more emphatic. Messi or Cristiano is almost there. No. Messi or Cristiano, I don't mind, is by far the best player in the world. And here, I'm emphasizing the superlative. This superlative is even stronger. He's by far the best player in the world. Any other possibility apart from by far? Two more. I think you said something similar again. Far and away. Messi or Cristiano or Haaland, Haaland, Haaland. I don't, uh, I don't know. Haaland is far and away the best player in the world. Far and away, more emphasis. Far and away, the best player in the world. And there's one more. Easy or easily? Easily, very good. Messi or Cristiano is easily. The best player in the world. So here, with this, I'm making the superlative even more emphatic. Yeah, more strength, more emphasis to your superlative. So far, so good. By far, far and away, easily. Have a look at this. To express that when something changes, it causes something else to change too. Okay, this is basic. The mm you study, the mm chances you have to pass. Much. Much or more? The more you study, the more chances you have. The more, the more. Basic one. And the opposite? Full sentence, Carlos. The less chances you have. So remember, the more, the more, the less, the less. Okay? The more, the more, the less, the less. <laughs> in English, please. I don't understand what you're saying. A whole minute? 60 seconds? <laughs> the more, the more, the less, the less. Sometimes you don't need to copy the full sentence. You can say the more, mm -mm -mm, the more, mm -mm -mm. the more, the more, the less, the less. Yeah? I mean, this is just an example. What I want you to remember is the more blah, 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 the more blah, blah, blah. You just need to copy that. Yeah? So far, so good. Okay, there are some short sentences that I would like you to complete. Uh, so there are, can I bring five friends to the party? Oh, yeah, yeah, bring five friends. The more, okay, one thing, one way is the more the better. That's okay. 
when you say happy Christmas, uh, what, what other way can you, in what other way can you say happy Christmas? Merry Christmas. So can I bring five people to the party? Of course, the more, the merrier. The more, the merrier. This is a very common one, yeah? The more, the merrier. Yeah, yeah, bring five friends, it's all right. The more, the merrier. Uh, the sooner, the better. The sooner, the better. These are short phrases that are very useful, yeah? The more, the better. The more, the merrier. The sooner, the better. So far, so good? Remember the three of them. Short sentences. Oh, my God, what happened? The more, the more, the sooner. The more, the more, the sooner. So far, so good? Those people are getting to the limit of my patience. The people outside. I will do it myself. I'll give them one. I'll give them two minutes. Yeah, tell them off. Well, I will not tell them off. I will just uh, respectfully request. They read my thoughts. It was telepathic. Equatives. Equatives is to, uh, we can emphasize similarity. Yeah, equatives are used to talk about similar things. So Cairo is, uh, this is what you already know, this is the intermediate level, as crowded as Sao Paulo. Okay, this is what you already know, that is the intermediate level. However, you can emphasize, yeah, emphasize this, emphasize the equative. Emphasize the similarity. Oh, how would you say that? Cairo is mm, 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 as crowded as Sao Paulo. Definitely. Okay, I would accept it. Disculpa, estamos justo aquí en clase. Si puedes bajar el tono. It's a lack of respect. I don't like lacks of respect. Okay. <sighs> Look at this. Cairo is just as crowded as Sao Paulo. Just as. Just as. If I want to say... Okay, I'll give you the beginning. Every. Every mm, as crowded as Sao Paulo. What? What is missing there? Every bit, point for Alvaro. Cairo is every bit as crowded as Sao Paulo. That's for the next one. <laughs> That's for the next one. You're getting ahead. Yeah, you're getting ahead. So remember to emphasize similarity. This is what you already know as, mm, as we can emphasize just with just or every bit. Yeah, emphasize the similarity. So far, so good. Have a look at this. To emphasize negative equatives, Alexandria is not as crowded as Cairo. Not as crowded as uh, Cairo. Can you emphasize that not with other option? That's for the next one. <laughs> okay, an emphasis similar to not. Have a look at this. Can you complete this? Alexandra is? No one near. Very good. It's no one near. No one near. It's crowded as Cairo. No one near. No one near. An emphasis for negative similarity. This is what you already know. As, as. Yeah. That's what you already know. The intermediate level. Another one that you can use to emphasize negative equative is nothing mm, as crowded as cairo what would you say nothing much nothing like danny what did you have today <laughs> alexandra is nothing like as crowded as cairo so remember when you want to emphasize a negative equative nowhere near nothing like as mm, as mm. yeah Alexander is in no way, yeah, I accept it. There are many, there are many other, yeah. In no way as crowded as Cairo. There are there is a lot of flexibility. I'm just giving you 
some possibilities, yeah? But English is endless, yeah? So far, so good. <sighs> to make an exact numerical comparison, Kairos population is mm, of Alexandria's. If I want to say, let me give it to you in Spanish. Okay. Uh, just look at me. Kairos population is <clears throat> of Alexandria's. <laughs> Full sentence, Danny. Very good. Have that of Alexandria's. Have that. Did you study this before coming to class? <laughs> Have that of Alexandria's. Yeah. Have that of Alexandria's. Carol's population is mm, of Alexandria's. Okay, if I want to say, yeah. And now it doesn't. It's a different structure. There, here we're talking about exact numerical comparisons. Yeah? It's not exactly the same as before. This is an exact. Have that of Alexandra. Uh, you know what, Carlos? No, but don't worry too much about that. Let me go back to that for a second. Because that's a very interesting question that Carlos has. You know, I asked an American person. I asked an American person the other day, and they actually told me that all combinations are acceptable. You could say, Pete's English, is, okay, this is the rule. This and this is the rule, okay? But in real life, in real life, American people or British people, Pete's English is better than here. That of John's, they could say here, that of John's with a Saxon genitive, and they feel it's okay. The rule is this. This is not the rule, but at an informal level, <sighs> It's all right. It's totally admitted, yeah, to use the Saxon genitive also here. Okay? All right? Okay, let us continue. Yep. So, have that of Alexandria's. And here, another possibility. Imagine that I want to say it's... Um, Oh, I don't know how to explain that. Okay. Ten of Alexandria's. Ten times. Ten times that. Okay. That of. Ten times that of Alexandria's. Yeah. Ten times that of Alexandria's. This is number ten, but you could use any other ten, any other number. Three times that of Alexandria. Uh, four times that of Alexandria. Yeah, here you would use a number. <laughs> okay, your time has come. Your time has come, Danny. Cairo is mm, as big as Alexandria. Okay, almost twice or just twice. Yeah. Twice as big as Alexandria's. As Alexandria. As Alexandria. Cairo. Yeah. Notice this. Here, Saxon genitive. Saxon genitive. Here, Cairo. Alexandria. Here we're just naming the cities. Yeah. Twice as big as Alexandria. Any other way? Uh, full sentence. Uh, Sophie. Have as big as Alexandria. Here we have as, as. This is the structure that you already know. As, as, yeah? Have as big, twice as big, and uh, also the times. You could say 10 times as big, 7 times as big, 5 times as big. Here you can have a number, yeah? 10 times as big as. Notice the difference. Here you have 10 times that of. And then the Saxon genitive. And here you just have 10 times as big as. So far, so good. Is it clear? Can we continue? Other ways to join two contrasting clauses. I repeat, two contrasting clauses. 
<clears throat> in Japan, people slurp their soup. In Spain, people consider it impolite. Very good. One of them is whereas. Whereas in Japan, people slurp their soup. In Spain, people consider it impolite. Another possibility, you just said it before. While in Japan, while in Japan, people slurp their soup. In Spain, people consider it impolite. And one more possibility, more formal. The same as this, but old fashioned. Whilst. Okay, this is the same, but the old fashioned one. Yeah, old fashioned, British old fashioned. Whilst. This is formal. This is formal. And old fashioned, yeah? Whilst in Japan, people slop the soup. In Spain, people, people consider it impolite. Whilst. Very formal. If you want to sound very formal in your writing, go for whilst. So far, so good. So, whereas, while, whilst. And then contrasting clauses. Just remember these three, yeah? You don't need to copy the full sentence. So far, so good. Yeah? 10 out of 15. We're getting close to the end. To introduce a similar fact or a contrasting fact, have a look at this. The cost of living is soaring. What is the meaning of soaring? Soar. No, uh, but this is a verb. Soar means to go dramatically up. For example, in the summer, temperatures are soaring. Yeah? The cost of living is soaring. <clears throat> a similar fact. Fuel prices are increasing. <clears throat> a, contrast, uh, a contrasting fact. Salaries are coming down. So, something similar. A similar fact. The cost of living is soaring. <clears throat> Fuel prices are in increasing. Just as... Just as uh, not exactly. Okay, I'll give you one which is very easy. This is wrong. Something is missing. We need adverbs, okay? Similarly, fuel prices are increasing. Okay, another possibility would be, I'll give you the beginning. Make it into an adverb. Likewise, likewise I like it very much. Likewise, how would you translate likewise here? De la misma manera. How do you say, how do you say del mismo modo? In, in English. Very good. In the same way, fuel prices are increasing. So these are adverb, adverbial expressions to indicate something similar, to indicate a similar fact, because this sentence and this sentence are indicating similar facts. Okay? However, this sentence is indicating a contrast. A contrasting fact. So what could you use there? Por el contrario. Okay, I'll give you the best, the, the first one. By contrast, comma, salaries are coming down. What else could you say? Mm, no, in the contrary, you could say. What else? I'll give you the beginning. In In comparison, in comparison, salaries are coming down. Uh, the, uh, this is something that we all know. However, salaries are coming down. Another one that we also know. On the other hand, uh, on the other hand, salaries are coming down. Is it totally obligatory to say on one hand and then on the other hand? Not totally obligatory. So if you're giving one fact and you and then you want to make a contrast with another fact, you can say on the other hand, even though you didn't say on the one hand before. As long as you, you're making a contrast, this expression is fine. So far, so good. 
So, to introduce a similar fact, this kind of adverbial expressions. To introduce a contrasting fact, this kind of adverbial expressions. Let's wait for people to finish writing down. In this case, yeah. In this case, yeah, because these two are clauses, yeah? Clauses are separated by a comma. And this is the end. This is the end. Here you have a, a, new, a new sentence, okay? The cost of living is soaring. However, if you put this sentence here, maybe it could work. The cost of living is soaring. By contrast, salaries are coming down. Yeah, if you place this here, you could have a comma. Yeah, but in this case, in this specific example, it was better to start with a new sentence. To compare two nouns, Japan, <clears throat> Japan, Spain is not overpopulated. What would you say there? Very good. In comparison to, point for Alvaro. In comparison to Japan, Spain, Spain is not overpopulated. Okay, this is the preposition to, in comparison to. Okay, give me another one. Unlike Japan, very good, I like it. Unlike Japan, Spain is not overpopulated. I accept it. Unlike Japan, uh, Spain is not overpopulated. Different. <laughs> okay, that would be uh, another example. Okay, we could say Spain and Japan differ in that. That would be a different structure. Okay. Spain and Japan differ in that. I will explain that later. Yeah, I will explain that later. Okay, so in comparison to, can you say in comparison with a different preposition, not to? In comparison with. So which one is correct? To or with? Both of them are correct. In comparison to Spain, in comparison with, sorry. Japan. Both prepositions are fine. Okay, I have another one which is compared. 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 What is the preposition? Compared to Japan, Spain is not overpopulated. Compared to Japan, another possibility? Compared with. Both of them are fine. Compared to, compared with. So these are cases in which both prepositions are correct. Compared to, compared with. In comparison to, in comparison with. And here I'm comparing two nouns, Japan and Spain. So far so good? 13 out of 15, very close to the end. To express whether something is quite the same or different. <clears throat> Her father, she is a musician. This is what you said before, no? This is what Sophia said before. <clears throat> Her father, she's a musician. Okay, you could use both. You could say, unlike. Unlike her father, she's a musician. Or you could say, like her father, she's a musician. Yeah, depending on the idea that you want to say. So here, we're comparing her father and she. Yeah, her father and her, but here I just wrote she. <laughs> I'm just underlining, yeah. Her father and her, here, she, yeah? she's a musician. Have a look at the, uh, the second one. Her father, <clears throat> her father, he's very protective. Here, I'm not comparing two people. Her father is a person, and he is the same person, okay? Here, same person. The same person. Mm, her father... He's very protective in the role of, okay? In the role of. Can you tell me something that means in the role of her father? Okay, maybe you can say uh, just before, just as her father, but yeah. As her father, he's very protective. And what is this as referring to? What is the meaning of as? A-S. It means in the role of. As her father, because he is her father, yeah, in the role of her father, 
as her father, he is very protective. In the role of her father, because he is her father, as her father, he's very protective. So be careful. Like her father, yeah, it means the same, yeah. It means like her father, she's very mysterious. It means that both of them uh, chose to be the same or something different, if you say unlike. But these are different people, okay? Here we're comparing two different people. However, here the person is the same. Her father and he is the same person. So far, so good? Very good. Close to the end, getting close to the end. Another way to state comparison, similarity. Spain and Japan are similar <clears throat> of longevity or different <clears throat> of longevity in terms of. In terms of longevity. And here we have a noun. Remember, after of, normally we need a noun phrase. Yeah? And similar in terms of. Different in terms of. Next sentence. Uh, Spain and Japan, <clears throat> in that one country is more densely populated than the other. This is <laughs> what you said before. What did you say before? Differ in that. And this differ. Differ. What is this? Is this an adjective, a verb, a noun? What is this? This is a verb. Spain and Japan differ. It's a verb. In that, one country is more densely populated. Okay. Longevity. Is this a clause or a noun phrase? Noun phrase. One country is more densely populated than the other. Is this a clause or a noun phrase? This is a clause. Why is this a clause? Because it has a subject and a predicate. Because there is a verb. So what rule can we get from here? Normally, after of, we need a noun phrase. And normally, after that, we need a clause. That is a rule of thumb. Yes, Danny. Sorry? I explained that the other day, but I explained it again, you know. <laughs> Should I say it again? Normally, again. <laughs> Normally, after the preposition of, normally, normally, not always, it is followed by a noun phrase. And normally, after that, that which follows is not a noun phrase. It's a clause. Yeah, it's a noun, and therefore a noun phrase. Longevity. So far, so good? I think we have finished. But there's one more. I wonder what it is. I forgot. I think there's nothing. Densely populated. More densely populated. Uh, Alvaro, explain. After that? Listen, listen to Alvaro. Subject and predicate. Yeah? Subject and predicate. Just out of curiosity, let me check. Nothing else, yeah? Yeah, nothing else. This is the 